Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over three different reasons that may be the cause of your unsuccessful IV sticks. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a critical care register nurse. I started a lot of IVs in my career as a nurse, ranging all the way from 24 week babies up through adults. In this video, I wanna share with you three reasons that I think are the cause of a lot of nurses' lack of success with their IV sticks. And I'm certainly no stranger to any of these. I've made all of these mistakes before, but let's jump right into um, some of the common mistakes I see nurses make and the really easy fixes and adjustments that you can make to become more successful with your IVs. I think it's also really important to note here that you do not have to be a super experienced nurse to be consistently successful with your IV sticks. While experience is certainly helpful and you can't teach experience, I think that learned skills can make up for a lack of experience and can kind of close that gap. So if you're a nurse who is not very confident or successful in their IV skills, regardless if you're a brand new nurse or a seasoned nurse, there are many skills that we'll talk about in this video that if you implement, I think you'll see your success rate go up tremendously. So let's get started. The first reason why nurses miss their IVs is because they don't know anatomy. And there is two different types of anatomy that we're going to talk about in this video. The first is human anatomy and the second is anatomy of the IV catheter itself. Nurses who are successful with their IV sticks have a good working understanding of both types of anatomy. Let's first talk about the anatomy of the IV catheter. I'd like to devote an entire video to this, but just for this component of why nurses miss, realize that there is a little bit of space between the tip of the needle and the IV catheter actually starting. Many nurses are unsuccessful because when they insert the needle, they don't insert it far enough to have the catheter itself be in the vein. So of course the vein will blow if you try to slide off the IV catheter when the IV catheter itself is not in the vein. It's also important for you to look at the IV catheter that you're using to see if there is a little notch present in the needle of the catheter. Some catheters contain this through all gauge sizes, all needle sizes, and some catheters will only have this notch if it's a larger gauge or a smaller needle, such as a 24 gauge or a 22 gauge IV. The purpose of this notch is to allow a little bit of flash, which means that a little bit of blood is coming into the catheter, so you are easily able to see that you are in the vessel. This can be problematic though, because not every IV catheter has this notch. For example, the larger needles or the smaller gauge needles in my hospital don't have this notch. So nurses poking with an 18 gauge needle are looking for flash to see if they're in the vessel. And in reality, they're never going to see the flash because that notch isn't there. They would need to be looking at the little chamber that's part of the IV to see if there's blood collecting there. This is a reason why nurses may be unsuccessful. By the time they realize they're in the vessel because they're looking at the wrong place, they're already completely through the vessel and the vein is blown. Another component of anatomy that you need to know is human anatomy. It's important to have a working understanding of where veins are in the body, specifically in the arm. An easy way to do this is to look at your own arm. If you see veins in a certain place in your own arm, there's a very good chance that they're going to be in the exact same place in your patient's arm. Nurses who are successful with their IV sticks know where veins are located. Another reason that nurses miss IVs that kind of pertains to human anatomy is simply because they are poking way too fast. I think as nurses, we have this mentality of poking fast so it's less painful, but actually the opposite is true. If you go much slower, you will be so much more successful. You will hit the vein at the right angle. You won't go through the vein. So if you just simply slow down and very methodically go through all the steps of actually poking, your success rate will be much higher. The second reason that nurses miss IVs is that they don't know how to beef up or plump up the veins that they are working with. It is so much easier to poke a vein that is easy to see and easy to feel because it's full of blood. 
One of the reasons why you may not be seeing plump veins in your patient is because your patient isn't positioned well. This is an easy fix. The heart is a pump and we want the extremity that we're working with to be below the level of the heart. We're going to use gravity in our favor to promote venous congestion. This creates a dependent venous stasis and it is much easier to see vessels this way. Another way that you can plump up your veins is to use heat. Room temperature is typically around 70 degrees and the human body is around 98.6 degrees. Think about how easy it is to see your own veins when you're in a hot shower. We want the same effect with our patients. So wrapping up your patient in warm blankets or even just their extremity in a warm blanket for five or 10 minutes can really make a huge difference in your ability to see their veins. This tip is especially helpful in children. Many times I've been asked to go in and start an IV on a child where the nurses have been unsuccessful. I'll walk in the room and the patient is just in a diaper in a cold room on an exam table. So of course they're mottled, they're pale, you're not able to see anything. Having them wrapped up in a blanket for 10, 15 minutes can make a huge difference in seeing their veins. Another way that you can help plump up your patient's veins is to put your tourniquet on tighter. Many times the tourniquets that I see nurses place aren't on tight enough at all. If you have placed a tourniquet tightly and you're still not seeing a lot of veins pop up, you can also put a tourniquet right below where you're going to poke too. So you'll have two tourniquets and you'll kind of poke in the middle. This can be really helpful in dehydrated patients. So to recap, nurses miss IVs because they don't understand anatomy, both anatomy of the patient and anatomy of the IV catheter. They miss IVs because they don't know how to plump up veins. And finally, nurses miss IVs because they don't know how to use their resources. This may sound like a no brainer, but it really is amazing how many times I see nurses not using tools such as visualization tools or even things like extra light and their IV attempts and success rates suffers because of it. There are many visualization resources specifically for nurses who are starting IVs that I think are especially helpful. Some of these resources include transilluminators, which shine a light down on the patient's hand or arm and you're able to see the pattern of the veins. Another great resource, of course, is ultrasound, also using vein viewers, which shine a light up from underneath the patient's hand. We typically use these in babies and small kids, but the light shines through and you're able to see the outline of veins that way. These are some really great visualization resources that I rarely see used. And when I do see them used, the success rate is so much higher. Finally, another resource that can be used more, especially in pediatric populations, is the resource of just having extra hands. Many times nurses are unsuccessful in their IVs because the patient is moving. If they had had extra hands there or hands able to hand them supplies as other people are helping to keep the kiddo from wiggling, their success rate would be so much higher. So don't be afraid to use visualization tools to bring an extra light and to of course ask for an extra set of hands to try to eliminate the amount of pokes that you need to use to successfully put an IV in your patient. So as you're starting IVs, don't be afraid to use these resources. Take a little bit of extra time to track down the transilluminator or to bring in an exam light and certainly don't be afraid to ask for an extra set of hands. These little changes can make a massive difference in the success rate of your IVs. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a like. Please also put down in the comments other ideas and tips that you have found helpful that have increased the success rate of your IVs. I love hearing different ways of doing things, so be sure to put those in the comments and consider subscribing to my channel as well to not miss any nursing content from me in the future.